What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. OCR racer. Today we're specifically going to be discussing OCR as a sport because I am going to attempt to complete my first OCR race this year. I hope to go to Black Ops, which is one of the highest, but we will see. <laughs> we will see. This journey has only just begun, but there's plenty of time. I'm only going to be joining in the Warrior Raid Ace. War <laughs> Warrior Race. <laughs> the Warrior Race 8, which is in November, so I have plenty of time to train. Specifically, looking at OCR, my interest in joining into it is because it's something I've always been very interested in doing. Just around the entire program that I am starting, very tired of postponing a lot of stuff that I want to do. So I'm sitting out, I'm doing it, I am gonna, I'm gonna rock this one. And Thomas is gonna help me do it! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Okay, cool. So, speak to me about OCR and the fact that actually quite a lot of people, something that's put me off of doing this earlier is the fact that it seems like it's such a professional and very hard thing to do. Is that true? Yeah, yes and no. So, okay. for those of you who doesn't know OCR, um, mention obstacle course racing. Yeah. Take a Google, it will take two minutes to find out exactly what it is. It's quite crazy, but it's not only the super fit, fitness fanatic kind of guy that does it. So 90% of the guys that come to OCR or the Warrior Race or um, like international, the Spartan races, or mm. is everyday oaks getting off the couch and just go having a ball. So okay, cool. the bigger part of the people is everyday people. When it comes to OCR, there are different levels of OCR and different types. So can you explain that to me? So. The most common, like any race, I guess you've got a shorter one, you've got a longer one, and some being more easier, and some being more difficult. So like the way we do it in South Africa, the most popular one is the Warrior Race. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there's three categories being the Rookie, Commando, and then the Black Ops. And then adding on to that, you have Rookie Elite, Commando Elite, and Black Ops Elite. Elite only meaning that you are trying to race, and you're looking at maybe, I don't know, podiuming, or you're just taking it and much more serious than the rest. Okay. So Not elite meaning I'm here for the party and the beer. In, when you're racing, is it against time? Completing mm. a certain amount of something? Yeah, good question. Most of them is time. You start in your batch with your, let's call it, age group or your category and you all set off together. So you don't start, let's say I start and then you start later and if your time is faster, you win. You, you race against whoever's next to you. Another thing that they have implemented at the start of this year is the sprint race. Okay. So if you don't like running for half an hour, coughing up a lung, <laughs> you, you can go for a, a much shorter race. It, sprint race is I think 400 to 800 meters maybe. Okay, okay. And then yeah. there's a whole lot of obstacles, so it's short, it's fast, there's a whole lot of impact. What led you to join OCR? It's actually a pretty funny story. I did my first warrior race, 2013. Um, I did it with a couple of friends from the kickboxing club. As okay, cool. We did the rookie, yeah. so it was cool. No, um, so that was you just trying it for fun. Yeah, it's me trying okay, it for fun. Cool. We, we got we got to do a race where you get to take your shirt off and still run around. <laughs> Everyone is sensitive. That's it. what's important is the fact that you got to take the shirt off. So we did the first one. It was a whole lot of fun. But I finished it. Okay, and I cool. thought to myself, okay, this is something I want to try. All right. Just up it a notch. And I entered for Black Ops, not Elite though, just the Black Ops category on the next race. And the Elite badge went off and we started 10 minutes behind 
Mm. And when I finished, I finished second overall. Oh, so what? I was like, that is such an achievement. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you represent, you know? So nice. I thought to myself, this is something that I can do. Mm, yeah. That I can do absolutely. well at. Um, so I entered for the next race, I entered the heat, came second again. After that, um, I won three events in a row. So that oh, was a sign nice. like, hey, Thomas, you need to train for this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so from, nice. so from there, I've been taking it serious and we are on five years. And the sportsmanship that you have with your teammates is actually quite a healthy one. Like, can you elaborate a little bit on that attitude that you have with your teammates? That specifically is something that I like a lot okay. about OCR. Um, the camaraderie between the racers themselves. Before the race, we all friends, we do stuff together, we even do hikes and travels together. Um, so the camaraderie is awesome, but once we step over the starting line, <laughs> it is game face. Yeah, it's blood! <laughs> yeah. Exactly, it is, it okay, is okay. absolute war okay. once we start it, but once we're over the finish line, we'll congratulate each other and we carry yes. on. OCR specifically, I find that is a big factor of why I love the sport so much. What qualities are the most important for an athlete to have? So we spoke about attitude a little bit earlier. It's really good to have the right mindset to go into mm. doing sports. So can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, I think what what qualities do you, do you need as an athlete is a very broad kind of spectrum. Athletes, they all sometimes you look at this typical athlete mm. image, you think they're all super committed and they're all um, really dedicated to what they're doing in the training and so on but firstly i think you just need um you need to want to do something so you need a goal and then you need the the want to accomplish it and usually there's different reasons for that that drive or that passion or whatever you want to call it there's different reasons why people would want to run a hundred kilometers sky run but qualities i think is important is dedication yes but i think that dedication comes when you when you set yourself that goal and you really want to achieve it you will be dedicated by default what is your reward in ocr i think it's very applicable it's rewarding doing yeah. it um having this massive challenge in front of you this big course standing on the starting line and knowing there's like a hundred people in your group all aiming for the finish line and if you actually get through that course never mind like you mentioned maybe mm. winning it but completing the course and gritting through the hard obstacles mm. like the long carries and the long tire pulls or just completing that thing at the end of it you feel so accomplished you actually it's addictive in a way you feel fulfilled and you come back again and then you do so, it again! <laughs> it's, like, it's like when you cross the finish line you say never in my life am I doing this again and the next event you're on the start. What is your lowest point that you remember your physical state being and how have you mm. progressed and gotten through that and what was your journey also mentally like getting through yeah, this through process? That. That's a good question a lot of people like struggle with the same mm. issue where you get into like a dark place and you just you don't have motivation mm. you don't want to Everything is negative, and I went into a, a space like that. Um, I think it's mid mid 2015 around. It was a yeah. hardcore start of the racing season. Everything was on full steam, and some of the races I would find myself running, and halfway or three quarter ways through the race, I'll be maybe fourth or fifth place, and I'll start doubting myself. I'll start thinking. I'll start. I'll start thinking of injuries that I might have <laughs> to be not finishing you know you mentioned oh you're... like i know what you're talking about like yeah. you you almost think of something so that you don't have to complete it because yeah. if you do complete it and you're not exactly where you want to be dealing with that doubt yes like you'd rather have the injury than like yeah. not get what you really hoped for exactly so, so yeah i was i was in a yeah in that mental state i would yeah. find myself thinking that while i'm running and then thought to myself, what is this? Mm. What, what is going on in your head? And having that inner race is worst case scenario. Yeah. But I found that sometimes you take it too serious. And I was at that stage taking too much on myself, putting mm. too much pressure on myself, unnecessary pressure, which you are just mm. putting on yourself. So just tap it back a bit, relax. I know it's a, it's a race and everybody's freaking red line and it's mm. just, 
blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> not that bad, but try and relax a bit. Not meaning going to a super slow walking pace. Yeah. Or just try and relax a bit and try and enjoy what you are doing. And once you start appreciating the scenery around you and you you'll automatically get back into a, a positive yeah. state of mind and yeah. from that that'll build up to feeling better. So I think in, in summary what I'm trying to say is relax a bit. Just yeah. take it down a notch yeah. and remember why you started. Yeah. So I started this because it's a lot of fun. And also just to like ignore the people around you and just to focus on your journey and your track. Because that's one of the things I found the hardest with doing sports. Because mm -hmm. I've never, like I've enjoyed doing sports throughout like high school and whatever. But I think when it came to actually competing to others, I was too busy comparing myself to other mm -hmm. people. And because of that, it really like grew and manifested and made like a really negative subconscious mm. thing with doing sports it kind of became a really negative thing for me so that's also part of the reason why I really want to challenge myself I really want to get out there so I think this is the right thing for me to do and hearing you speak about like your experiences and your journeys and stuff is also really inspiring and I mean that's really inspired me to want to take to this that. journey so I'm really really hoping that somebody else is gonna be listening Just connecting back to like the sportsman's mental state that you're competitive with other people but you're also competitive with yourself uh -huh. like you're also always challenging yourself to do mm. better and to up your game so where is the fine line between really pushing yourself and then pushing yourself too far like how do you know when you should just stop yeah okay so basically there's two questions in that the first one yeah, being how do you know when you've gone too far and where's the balance um, yeah I think in any sport or any topic really, nutrition, uh, running, yeah. balance, balance is key. If you overdo anything, it's going to be bad. If you underdo anything, it's not going to be worth it. General accepted rule, listen to your body. Mm. If your body says no, then try and listen to it. But it's, it's all in perspective. It's not like, it's Monday, my body don't want to train today. <laughs> Yeah, no. uh, there's a difference between laziness and yes. when your body is tired. Pushing too mm. far is something that a lot of people do, especially mm. if they don't have a coach. They're like, every day I'm going to train a hard day. Mm. And at the end of that week, they're absolutely broken. Mm. And they actually then get a negative growth and not a positive growth. Every hard day should be followed by easy day. Okay. So if you do a hard day today, tomorrow needs to be an easy day. Just to give yourself chance to recover so the way we, we say it is recovery equals growth so what he's saying is that when you're exercising your muscles are actually separating that they are tearing from the actual friction that's happening your resting days are then allowing for your muscles to grow back together that's what builds muscle and then makes you stronger so you do have to rest because if you're just exercising you're just tearing muscle tearing muscle tearing muscle yeah. and then you're like nothing's gonna happen your muscle will start showing after a certain amount of time. Depends on the person, depends on your body type, depends on your lifestyle. Everyone's different. Everyone has a different result. Yeah. So that's also something to keep in mind and don't be discouraged. Don't compare yourself to anyone else because it is not going to work. How many resting days should you have in ratio to exercising days? You can change it a lot depending on the person that's doing the training. But if you're a beginner, so if you're new to any training, I would say take maybe two rest days a week, two to three. So build it, start really slow. The biggest mistake that 90% of the people make is going too hard, too soon. And then you get an injury and you're discouraged. And so take it really slow starting out, um, two to three rest days a week. And then keep that for four to six weeks before you step it up. We always try and say never increase more than 10% per week. So keep it... Small steps, small steps. If you do it gradually increasing and you won't even notice, after two months you'll see you running maybe double as long as you used to. So yeah. take it really slow. For myself, I do one rest day a week, but I'll have harder days and easier days, which we call active recovery. So you'll okay. go do a training set, but it'll be super easy. Okay, cool. So you use loosening your muscles, just getting the lactic acid out from the previous death session you had. <laughs> but okay. still being active. So one day of just absolutely chilling. 
take a series and just binge the hell out of it. <laughs> binge watch <laughs> yeah. Netflix and chill. Okay, um, and then we also spoke about or did a few stretches earlier today. Yes. So in conjunction with your exercises, how many stretches should you do before and after exercising? Um, so we did a couple of stuff. Um, like I always try to think when you're listening for an event or a race or whatever, the longer the race is or the event, the shorter your warm-up needs to be. Um, so if you're gonna do a 24-hour endurance run, you're gonna start super slow. So just mm -hmm. loosen up a bit, you'll be fine. If you're gonna do a 100 meter sprint, I would suggest doing a 20 to 30 minute warm up before mm. hitting a hard run. So the shorter and more intense the run, the longer your warm up needs to be. And then always start from one point to another. Start at your feet, loosen it up all the way to the top, end at your arms, maybe your neck and your shoulders. Uh, make sure everything's loose. Before a race, always dynamic stretching, meaning not too much static, keeping it there, you're really pulling out the muscles. So you'll stretch it a bit, but you'll release it again, same on the other side. So movement, mm. more than eh. Okay. Uh, so dynamic stretching before, and then after you want static stretching. You want the long okay. stretches after to loosen up the muscles. What advice would you really give to encourage people to come? And to encourage newers or noobs that are now only wanting mm. to join? Like me! Like me! Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. if, you, if you take the chance to come and do one of the OCR events, I will. I think it would be one of the most biggest rewarding things that you would ever do. Not only because it's super fun, but it's it's you that feeling of accomplishment when you're done is something that you have to experience yourself. I can't tell you, Louise, <laughs> it's so awesome. <laughs> but no, you're you just gonna sit there and yeah, I know. And, and they sure, all say that. Sure, sure, yeah. So yeah. Come and experience it. I yeah. would say, don't go for a hardcore one. There's stuff like Muddy Princess, which is self-explanatory. Yeah. You go do a Muddy Princess, go go for a rookie warrior race. Um, take some friends with you and do it, do it as a fun event. Yeah. Don't take your first event as Terminator mode. Terminator. <laughs> don't do beast yeah, mode on your first run. So take it easy. Okay. Do your first event and I'm absolutely sure you will love it. Overall, the biggest lesson that's really come out of this that stands out to me is that um, you need to experience it yourself. You need to put your foot down, get out there, do it. Mm -hmm. Find out for yourself. There is only so much that other people can tell you. You're only going to find out what your own breaking points are, what your development is going to be. You need to pressure yourself and you need to get into it. Give it your all. Yeah. Go all hard. Don't go, ah, I'll try it and maybe it doesn't work out. If you want to do something, I say put everything into yeah. it. Give it your all or just go home, man. Like, so you can't do, do half a bungee time. jump. Yeah. You, can't, yeah, you can't do half a bungee jump. You gotta do the whole thing <laughs> despite the fact that gravity has complete control. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah. Thanks for having awesome me. For having you. Yeah. yeah. Fun. Yeah! Okay, beast mode. Go find <laughs> Thomas, what, Downscore, OCR, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. He's everywhere. Go find him. Okay. Yay! <laughs>